stay away from them for the test. And it's short term memory because it's mostly not hard enough. And then you wake up, and that's why it's not your goal. You're going to get yourself with the time. So. Now, when we go from, we are play it safe, so sleep and then awareness. So awareness is simply saying the athlete should be aware of the choices they make. If I know that I'm going through a heavy practice session, maybe I need to back off on my work. So I still, like even right now, I have national team athletes who have jobs. And so they'll go work for 20 to 30 hours a week to have some extra spending money. And I try to ask them not to do that because a lot of the jobs are uh, in, in the food business. So they're waiters, waitresses who are carrying foods to tables. That's not exactly what I want my athletes doing when they recover is walking back and forth from the kitchen to a table, carrying plates. So what I try to do is get them to change their work schedule based on the training. Be aware of how the job impacts performance. Other things is their relationships with other people. You know, if they're in a fight with their significant other, if they're in an argument with their parents, it's stress. So they need to be aware of that stuff. So what I try not to do is, I don't want to pry into their personal life, but I like my athletes to tell me what's going on. Because if they stayed up until 2 a.m. arguing with their boyfriend or girlfriend, I need to make an adjustment in the practice schedule based on that. You know, I can't get mad at them and punish them because they stayed up until 2 in the morning, arguing about something that's probably bigger than sport once in a while. So I have to make an informed decision and change the training and still get what I want, but maybe pull back on the ball. So we have to be aware. Another thing that I like to talk about is the energy envelope theory. So this comes out of uh, the medical field. And this is saying that we have a certain amount of energy each day that we are allowed to spend. So it's literally like you have an envelope and it's full of cash. And you can walk around the room and you can give out a dollar to every person or you can give all your money to one person or I can give out a dollar to, to a few people and keep the money into my envelope and keep it in my pocket and save it. So what you're trying to do is you try to give that picture to the athlete to say, okay, how much energy is in your envelope today? How much money do you have to spend in practice? So we need to stay within that envelope. I don't need you borrowing from somebody else because that means if you're borrowing from somebody else, you're digging too deep into the fatigue curve. Mm -hmm. So it's daily status. The energy envelope really talks about the daily status of your athlete, how they feel. You know, we can do all this test, but at the end of the day, no one in here knows what it's like for their athletes, what they're thinking, how they're feeling. You know, they know better than we do. And so we need to really say, tell us what you have today. What is your 100%? It's easy to do, you know, so like there's different ways you can even measure that in practice. One thing that you don't have to have in this expensive test is for is to do uh, uh, either a standing long jump, like you can do those. If typically they jump 37 inches and they jump 35 inches, obviously they don't have it today. So you back off. Other things would just be a standing long jump. Standing long jump, you know, just jump out. Do two or three hops in a row. Another thing is with the switch map, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. It's like a very cheap version of what we do, so I'll keep that. One thing I ask my athletes to do is keep a training log. I like to know everything. I like to know when they go to sleep, how long. I like to know their nutritional habits. I like to know what they ate, when they ate it, how much they drank. I have athletes sometimes that even put down how many times they went to the bathroom solids and liquids. Because if there's a disturbance there, there's a disturbance somewhere else in the body. Right? So as silly as that sounds, the more we know, the better we can change their training based on that. So if they cut down on their solid release, maybe they're not eating enough fiber in the diet. Maybe they're eating too much junk. Maybe I'm going to see that later on and they fatigue in practice. So again, there's a lot of things that we can, we can find out. Oh, always change, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you always write it out. Like, I, I write out, I mean, my, each block, my training program is typically eight pages. <coughs> notes, instructions, what I want them to do every day. And I would say 95% of the time, something changes. In that, even though it's there, and I don't remake the work.
Word document when we interact, I'll make a change just because the athletes. That's my, what I hand them in a paper is the ideal program, but they never give me the ideal map. You know what I mean? Just because they're so. Uh, nutrition will be covered in Colorado, so I really don't want to steal this thunder, even though my background as well is nutrition. But there's a couple of things I will say. There's a lot of theories out there on how to eat. And in this country, we get caught up on the fact that, you know, I, it really bothers me sometimes because we have so much disposal and, you know, we can consume whatever we want, but we nitpick and we have the caveman theory, we have the paleo theory, we have the gluten-free diets, we have this diet, we have the anabolic diet, we have the South Beach diet, we have the grapefruit diet, we have the 40-40-30 diet. It's like all these different diets, and at the end of the day, if we just eat, we would be fine, you know. Uh, it's it's ridiculous. And so things that I will tell you is that continuous feeding, so you see how like cows graze on grass, just little, that's how you need to eat. Okay, another way to think about it is uh, anybody ever planted a flower, a garden? Anybody know how grass grows? Yes. Okay. It's what happens if you plant a seed, you put the topsoil down, and then it's just a torrential downpour of rain. Or are you stand there with a garden hose with water just blasting the soil. What happens? It, it, so the water causes runoff. It's what we call erosion. So the ground can't even take that water that you give it and it just runs off. Saturation. Right? That's what happens when you try to eat big meals. Your body just takes it and it just runs off. You don't use it all. So the best way to do, if you want to grow a, a plant, a little bit of water, stop. A little bit of water, stop. A little bit of water, stop. Just gradual feeding of fluids throughout the day will make that grass grow. There's no runoff. It's the, the ground, the soil uses that water. So it's the same way with the human body. Okay? Little meals throughout the day keep you anabolic, meaning growing protein, recovering. That is plain and simple. Our athletes eat four to six meals a day. They eat more carbohydrates while they're working out. We want to eat while we train, which is hard for endurance athletes. I, I will give you that. Pre and post would be suffice. Uh, but in the weight room, they're always consuming something, what we call a poor man's recovery drink. It's a liter bottle, half water, half Gatorade, half Powerade whatever the case may be, a sugary based drink with a scoop of whey protein, mix it up and that's what they drink. That keeps them anabolic, that improves protein synthesis, and they actually recover while they're breaking down. Why wait and eat after your training is over? Why not eat and recover during your training? Because, you know, if in elite sport, we have to be doing something all the time. You know, we can't take five days off. We can't just stay in bed the next day. So we have to make sure that we are able to train. So that's why we start the recovery process during that day's training. So that's what I will tell you right now is just make sure that you're teaching your athletes to eat solid meals but also snack. And those snacks can be something as small as 100 calories, which is almost the size of like a small banana or like one piece of bread. That's all you need. You don't need a lot. So that's the thing, it's like, how many hours of good that you that? We try to eat every two, two and a half hours. So your body goes into starvation mode about every four hours, so we don't want that to ever happen. We don't want to ever break down muscle to feed the body. So what we do is every two hours we're having snacks. And before they go to bed at night, we give the body a really good protein, like something like cottage cheese or yogurt, <laughs> something that's going to stick to them while they sleep and recover. So, so we, yeah, so we periodize the nutrition as well. So like in a strength endurance block, you're doing more anaerobic training, so you probably need to consume more carbohydrates, but you also need to eat more protein. So then when you get into a maximum strength block, when you're doing less volume, you don't need as much carbohydrates. 
So then let's talk about in season. You have some players who maybe never see the court and some players who see the floor in competition. So their diets have to change based on the performance. And so, you know, you, you kind of, just like you have changes in the training, you have to change what they eat to accommodate what phase they're in. So that's what I'm saying, like nutrition has to be, a, it has to be the same as your training. And that's where as a coach, you have to make sure that you have someone with you where you're reading up on nutrition strategies to tell your athletes what they should do at that time. Yeah, I mean that's and that's hard. I mean that's, 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 that's it is. It's that's the, you, you as a coach either if they're on the bench and they're not playing as much, you either have to put them through training, maybe simulations, or do something extra to let them eat that much. But you know because it is hard. I mean I think back to, to like coaching college track and field athletics. You know you go and you know that there's somebody who maybe ran the one, two, and the four by four, and there's somebody who was an alternate on the four by four. Are you going to tell them not to have dessert? because they didn't do anything, they were just an alternate, just in case this person didn't run, but that, they ran three events, and like you can't do it, you know, it's like, you, it's it's hard to tell someone they can't have food, but so that's where as a coach you have to either teach them, and educate them that, that they can't have the buffet because they're not playing as much, or you have to put them through some training that matches that competition, so it's, yeah. The last one of play it safe is execute. The athlete and the coach must execute the plan as written out. The athlete cannot be doing things behind the coach's back. They can't be going and doing extra practices. One thing I cannot stand is when the coach, you know, when I sit here and write up the volume load of the training, and I find out the athlete's going in the way room to do curls. Or they want to look good. And I'm like, why do you need to do that? Well, we're having a bicep curl, like literally, this happened last year. They were in the Olympic Training Center, of all places, they're having a bicep size contest. So all these Olympians are actually seeing who's got the biggest bicep. So they, for four weeks, they're in there going at nighttime, they're sneaking in with one of the assistants, and they're doing curls to see who can get the biggest arms. Because last time I checked, they give gold medals out for the biggest bicep. <laughs> no. But that's what I'm saying, like, execute the plan. Don't go off rail. Don't do your own thing. You know, that stuff impacts performance. So it comes to the overload also. Yes, it does. It overloads. Exactly. And then as a coach, you see yeah. problems in their results. And you're like, what happened? I don't understand why this is not working. And then you find out later that they're doing things like the curl contest. <laughs> no, they don't put in the training log either. They know better. They know. Alright, 